dear brothers and sisters happy new year to all of you <clears throat> my master used to say that a spiritual guide need not speak at all as you know babuji maharaj spoke very little he said if and when a guide has to speak it should be only to teach us about what we have to do how to do it when to do it where to do it and of course why to do it there is no room for philosophy in speeches of sahaj marg in fact sahaj marg has no philosophy it does not rest on any philosophy it is neither advaita nor dvaita nor vishistha advaita you know all these things yet we have to speak because we are expected to speak Babuji used to say something else, much more relevant. See, that nature speaks. He used to stoop down and lift a you know, small flower and say, "This speaks." He used to say that if you look at the sky or the stars, they speak to you. but do we know what they are speaking do we listen to them or are we just treating them as flowers and mud and water and air we have lost the art of listening today's world is full of talk 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 every time i see this airtel advertisement you know talk more Indians don't need to be told to talk more. We talk too much, and because we are always talking, we never listen. Because we never listen, we don't know what nature is saying to us. Babuji said, "Nature is silent when it has no burdens to bear." You know, like a child sleeps silently when it has no pain, no hunger, no thirst. it screams when it is in pain the mother knows it cries when it is hungry the mother knows when it, it laughs when it is happy we have seen all this we have seen babies grown up growing around us babuji said when nature speaks when do we listen when the speech of nature when its messages when its signals appear to us violent Babuji said nature is never violent. When you eat too much and you have an indigestion, the inner lack of balance manifests itself in the need to go to the toilet or to vomit and that is not gentle it is violent. Depending on the extent of your indulgence it depends it it controls the violence of the reaction this is individual when we take in too many impressions we have dreams they may be what we call good dreams happy dreams or nightmares it all depends on the impressions that we take in. if you don't take in impressions there are no dreams and when we burden the earth with our what shall i say grossness and it goes on accumulating nature wants to throw away all this grossness and you have manifestations like earthquakes the tsunami that we had a few days ago wars pestilence wide the large scale illness we should not unfairly accuse presidents of different countries for wars that they fight 
of course the president thinks he is the cause of the war he took a wonderful decision if he wins the people praise him the losing nation blames him but he is no more responsible than you are responsible for your dreams he is also a manifestation of the grossness under which the earth is groaning and because it is so much the burden is so much it breaks out violently whether it is iraq or yugoslavia or korea or in the future it may be any other country it is our thoughts our actions the grossness of the human being that produces these reactions nature is not angry somebody today said i want to appease nature nature is not angry when you say suddenly wake up out of a nightmare and scream you are not responsible it has to happen see what is inside has to go out so as long as we continue to burden this world of ours this planet with our grossness we must expect more and more of these violent outbreaks in the human reaction which can be wars causes can be any a cause can be sharing of water it can be religion it can be a belligerence across the border it can be anything we don't need many excuses to fight so let us remember that we are depending on us we create the world in which we live this has been spoken of for thousands of years in occult literature in esoteric literature in religions too but our master also says the same thing but we don't listen we just say yes yes wonderful i did my cleaning this evening and tomorrow we are merrily at it accumulating more some scars we forget that what we ate yesterday has disagreed with us and continue to eat it today also no today it will not disagree because today it is properly made so you see we are always seeking justification for our actions knowing very well that our actions are not justifiable it is human nature not to be able to accept blame criticism we like praise but we don't like criticism now we are all here as spiritual aspirants we are not just human beings going around accumulating grossness we are spiritual human beings accumulating grossness and in this case the grossness is even more tough poisonous bitter in its effects because knowing we shouldn't do it we do it there is a law which says that one who knows and does not obey is more punishable than the one who is ignorant and does not obey spirituality looks for its success on very few principles love of course is the paramount one if there is love you don't need anything else if not you need tolerance you need faith you need courage and you must not have prejudices courage can come only where there is faith if i have to live in a world today where there is full of pestilence and wars and tsunamis i must have courage and courage is based on what on the faith that he is with me but this faith is not enough if you think he is with me therefore i will not be washed off in the waters of the ocean that is not faith if you think my house will not collapse because babu ji is with me that is not faith that is wishful thinking faith says whatever may happen to me he is with me and when he is with me it can only be for my good now how many if you are willing to think like that or accept the truth of such a faith we don't want such a faith 
So we turn away from spirituality, go back to our temple, thinking the God in the temple is more powerful and he will protect me. But even temples are washed away. You know, Dwarka is gone. It was the abode of Lord Krishna, created by the celestial architect, Vishwakarma. Where is Dwarka? So we have to have faith, which means whatever may happen to me, if my master is with me, it is for my good. Even death is for my good. Imagine a life where there is no death. Suppose I am to live a thousand years. What will happen? One young European wanted to live long. I said, how long? He said, oh, very long. I said, I prefer to die soon. He said, it is foolish, child. I said, no. He said, oh, come on, you Indians, you're all pessimistic. Explain to me. I said, okay, See, suppose you live to 200 years. What will happen? Of course, your father would have been dead more than 100 years earlier. Your wife would have been dead. Your children would have been dead. Your grandchildren would have been dead. You will see your great-grandchildren dying. And you are 300. Seven generations of children have gone. When you are 600, what have you to He said, oh my God, I didn't know it was that bad. I said, you didn't think it was that bad because you didn't think. Long life can be a curse. Death is a great relief. Death is not that wonderful old man on the buffalo, you see, Yamadharma. He comes to say, enough, come with me. Like a mother goes to school to bring her child out. Of course, the child wants to continue to play. It says, school is over, now I want to play. Mummy says, no darling, you must come home. Yama is like that. And of course, in spirituality, there is no Yama. When we die, Master himself comes to take us. And when you say, Master is with me, I feel his presence all the time. And when he comes, why are you afraid? No, no, sir, he doesn't come to take me to Shah Jahapur. I don't know where he will take me. See? Then where have you been wanting to go in spirituality? So you have to think, you see. No, sir, I have faith in the Master. But you know, I have suffered loss. I don't know how to continue to have faith. So faith it does not mean we will be successful in life. Faith does not mean that we will not be sick. It does not mean anything. It only means I have faith. I have faith in him who is my beloved, my master. He can do nothing which is bad for me. Though it may appear to be bad. So that faith can only give us courage. And of course the most important thing that we must not have is prejudice. What is this prejudice? That somebody is white, somebody is black, somebody is Hindu, somebody is Muslim, somebody is tall, somebody is short, rich and poor. Trying to marry only in your own caste. Amma marrying Amma, Naidu marrying Naidu, Brahmin marrying Brahmin. Not even Brahmin marrying Brahmin. It must be my particular way of Brahmin. Vadaba marrying Vadaba. Ayyagar marrying Ayyagar. There also, you know, Y or U makes a big difference. This has ruined our country, where today instead of one country, I dare say we have as many Indians as there are individuals. Now, how can we be a united people when we are divided by so many prejudices. Babuji said religion divides, caste divides, color divides, opinions divides. You know two people can have differing opinions and suddenly one man becomes angry and there's murder just because of difference of opinion. So if you want a happy new year, of course I wish it for all of you. But you have to create that new year for yourself and every day of the new year and every day of the succeeding years because we are not happy with the 1st of January alone. Happy New Year is only a condensed term for happy 9, 2005, 2006, 2007 telescope, you know, as far as I can see. 
if I have to wake up tomorrow morning happy, I must have slept happy. I must have had no enemies when I go to sleep. I must not have overburdened my stomach or my conscience. Then I will wake up happy. If I wake up happy, I can make other people happy. So you see, happiness it doesn't result by the change of a calendar or the change of the position of the moon and the sun. It depends on every one of us what we are going to have tomorrow and forever after. So Sahaj Marg is very simple, but it is not practiced properly. It is not understood. People don't talk about it. They bring their prejudices here. They come and meditate. They are abhyasis in this hall when they go back. They are again North Indians and South Indians, Andhravadus and Karnatakas, Khammas and Naidus and Dayangas, Maharashtrians, what have you. So, brothers and sisters, everything depends on you, not only your tomorrow, not only your next year, the state of the world depends on you. Whether there is going to be fresh earthquakes depends on you. Whether there is going to be calamitous wars depends upon you. Everything depends on you. So, in trying to create spirituality within ourselves and to work towards a goal, with unremitting effort, with faith, with courage. If we do it properly, we are also, also contributing to, to the welfare of our planet, to the welfare of the world, to the welfare of the universe. Anything you do against this is not only against yourself, but against the rest of the world. We must not imagine that we are living for ourselves. Anything you do, good or bad, reflects on the entire universe. In this consciousness, if you continue to work and strive in your spiritual life, the world will automatically become a bigger, better, better place. We don't have to wait for another Ram Rajya, you know. There is no Ram Rajya. There never was a Ram Rajya. In the time of Rama, there was no peace. His life was a disaster. Everybody knows it. He lost his wife. He committed suicide going into the Sarayu. And of his descendants, there is no mention. But we still say Ram Rajya, Ram Rajya, I don't know what for. If it is not here today, it doesn't matter whether it was in the past or whether it will be in the future. Past and future have no meaning for us. We are here and now. If you want it here and now, you must act here and now. To act here and now, you must throw off all prejudices now at this instant in time. Have faith and courage and go ahead. I pray for all of you. Thank you.